Welcome to Major Keys. I'm here with basketball analyst LaChina Robinson. I am so excited to talk to you today. You're hard to get a hold of. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> There's certain times of the year it gets a little crazy, and this summer has been just um, busier than I would have liked. But I just can't believe I finally get to be on Major <laughs> Keys. This is like, it's a big time for me. It's big time for me. Uh, like you said, you're busy certain times of the year, but you're constantly working. You're doing WNBA coverage. You're doing college coverage. Um, you're around the rim podcast, and now you've joined the ACC Network. What is that like? I'm uh, really excited. You know, I mean, I've known for at least ten years now. Now I can't. I'm not one of those people that have known what I wanted to do since I was a little girl, but. Uh, it became clear to me when I was in my late 20s that I wanted to be a women's basketball analyst. And so over the last 10 years, I've been able to do way more than I ever expected from, you know, WNBA finals to working, uh, you know, NCAA tournament for women college basketball. So uh, ACC Network is special because it's kind of like going home, right? right? Uh, I went to Wake Forest and uh, it's a big, big move for the conference to now have its own network and I can um, kind of go home in a sense. Yeah, and we'll get into you at Wake Forest, but at first you mentioned being a young girl and not knowing what you wanted to do. Um, how did you get involved in sports as a kid? Yeah, I was reluctant for sure. Like I was definitely the little girl who um, liked to stay in the house and watch TV. I did like to watch sports. So I've always liked to, I mean, I remember watching golf and figure skating. Like I've always been into it. So there was something clearly yeah. competitive inside of me, but I would rather stay in the house than go outside. Okay. <laughs> so uh, my introduction to sport came late. My sister, my older sister played basketball. Uh, and I still didn't want to play until I was probably about, well, I started off as a cheerleader because my friends were cheerleaders. I read that. Yeah, I read that. So, you know, <laughs> you got to be where your friends are. Okay. But my legs were way too long. I started to get super tall. You know, when I was doing my flips, I'm hitting people in the face with my, with my feet. And my mother's like, why are you always on the base of the pyramid? I'm like, because I'm the tallest. Nobody's going to pick me up. Um, so anyway, all of those kind of struggles to fit in. Um, they were challenging. And I was probably six four when I was 14 and so I was taller than everybody and um, one day there was a guy in my community that just kept coming by his name was Michael J kept coming and saying you should play basketball and I'm like, mm. my mother was like uh, no we'll pass uh, until one day um, you know he mentioned that I could get a free education and my mother pretty much <laughs> dropped me off at practice and yeah. never came back to get yeah. me she was big on education so that okay. was kind of the stickler yeah, and what was the impact of sports? Because, I mean, we talk about how important sports are for women. How did that impact your life? Yeah, like I said, I really felt like I didn't fit in anywhere as a young girl. I was awkward and, and tall and low self-esteem. I had big feet. I couldn't wear the clothes everybody else was wearing. So um, when I stepped on the basketball court, I felt a place of acceptance. And I think that's what we love about sport, mm -hmm. right? Like you have played and there are people on your team that come from all walks of life and different cultures and races and had different experiences. And so I just felt really accepted and I, I kind of found my voice, you know, uh, learned about communication and made friends and what it means to be, to be committed to show up somewhere every day and go to practice <laughs> and have a role on the team and how to set goals. So there were just so many things that, um, that I learned through sport that are still the foundation to my life today. Yeah, and you went to Wake Forest, so obviously all that work paid off and you did get that education. How do you get from Wake Forest to now where you are today? Well, you know, going to Wake Forest was definitely a, a challenge for me. It was very different. Um, it's a predominantly white school. Uh, I had never been that far from home. Uh, my mom was like five hours driving, but for me it was a long way. <laughs> um, um, but also, you know, I have 15 brothers and sisters, um, both with my combined mom and dad side, all blood related, but I was the first college graduate. So, um, you know, we had done this before, you know, as a family. <laughs> right. And then when I went to school, my mom lost her job my freshman year. So there were just a lot of challenges and transitioning. But Wake, going to Wake Forest was the best decision I feel like I've ever made in my life because yeah. I was challenged to step outside of the, my comfort zone. Um, you know, I had to kind of find myself in a different way, in a different environment. Um, I learned how to survive. I learned, you know, what it, what work ethic was really about. I remember my freshman year, um, I couldn't make my mile time, like to save my life, right? Now, Been there. Of, of, right. <laughs> of course, I was supposed to be practicing my mile time, but didn't do that. Thought I was good. Okay. 
Um, I didn't make my mile, and so I had to get up every morning my freshman year and run 400s until, you know, I eventually made my mile the day of practice. But I tried to quit. Like, I tried to go home. Like, I went, you know, fall break, I went home, and I was like, Mom, I just don't think this is for me. Um, you know, I can't make my mile time. Like, to me, that was such a major thing because I felt disappointed, you know. Mm -hmm. And my mother said, you're going back to school. And, um, you know, so that freshman year to me was my introduction to this is how you make life transitions, right? This is how you recommit yourself. This is how you become dedicated through discomfort. Um, so I went to Wake Forest, thought I was going to be a lawyer when I got there. And then I was like, I don't want to do all this reading and writing. It's way too much. Uh, then I thought I was going to be a psychology major. Almost didn't make it through the intro class. Settled on sociology because I really liked, uh, I really liked the subject matter. Like I take, I took classes like um, social inequality, death and dying, marriage and the family. So it was things that were just in interesting to me. Um, the sociology of sport. Didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I figured I would get an education that I enjoyed. And when I left, um, or when I was getting ready to graduate, it, it came upon me very quickly, as you know. It was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like... I had sustained an injury that required me to take a year off after I got after I graduated, so I couldn't go play overseas because that was an option. Um, and then I just decided I wanted to stay close to basketball. And honestly, Shantiana, like that is what has anchored my life ever since. Is that I just wanted to stay close to the game of women's basketball because it gave so much to me. So the easiest avenue I saw getting out of college was in athletic administration. So I went to the ACC. I did an internship there, which was life-changing met so many amazing people network again learned hard work from a different perspective right like um you know get copy machines and stapling and memos and all that good stuff um so i ended up getting a job at georgia tech after that and i was the administrative assistant for recruiting was my first position again my goal was to be an athletics director did that for about five years and then felt like this was not what I wanted to do. And was able to make a pivot into broadcasting, you know, and, and, and obviously a lot goes into that, but at the end of the day, it was more like following my heart until there was a change and then following your heart again. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's kind of how it came about for me. And you talk about wanting to stay close to the women's game, and you've done that throughout your career, exclusively covering women's yeah. basketball. Why have you not gone? Because I know you've had an opportunity to cover men's basketball. Why have you stayed exclusively with women's basketball? You know, um, I I've always been someone where whatever my career was going to be, I wanted it to be very closely tied to my purpose. And it was clear to me as I was growing up as a young girl when I felt rejected or um, when I had a low self-esteem that um, I got a good sense of what women face in the world you know when I when I found out that uh, one of my male colleagues when I got out you know to the real world was making more money than I was so I I'm learning about all these spaces where women struggle where where they're t taken advantage of in some situations where um, they're not equal and I said, I want to change that. I want to help to change that. And one big space where women are not equal is in sports media. I think 4% of all uh, sports media coverage is dedicated to women's sports. And I'm like, but women's sports are amazing, you know? And so I kind of always felt like my purpose was, A, to help other women who have experienced the things that I've gone through. Um, but also to just help to grow the game of women's basketball, help to grow women's sports coverage. And yeah, there are a lot of women out here that cover other sports that they're passionate about and no knock to them at all, whether that's football or whatever you do. But for me, it's never been about, oh, this is a bigger platform. Oh, I can make more money here. But how can I make a difference? And I know that when I walk into a gym every day, with women, a lot of them look like me, a lot of them are black women who, you know, will face the same challenges that I have in the world, like, that's the space I'm supposed to be in. I'm supposed to be in a place where they cannot just see me, but they can touch me, um, and I can be present, and I can be a role model. So, um, women's basketball, for all of those reasons, plus I can get back to the game that gave so much to me, has been the place that I know I need to be. Yeah, there's a lot in there that I do want to talk about, uh, coverage being one of them. Mm -hmm. 
What is the importance of having women's sports, you know, covered in our national media? I mean, we've had a great year in sports. The U.S. women's soccer team um, won their fourth World Cup. You know, Allison Felix just broke Usain Bolt's record. Um, what is the importance of girls seeing that on television? Well, um, I'm a firm believer in if I can see her, I can be her. And I know you have a lot of women that you watched, admired, and looked at from afar along the way. And I just think when we put women in visible spaces where young girls can look and say, wow, I can be Allison Felix, or wow, I can be Robin Roberts. You know, that was, that was what I saw growing up. Or, um, oh, I can be Carolyn Peck. Like, it's just important to give young girls that vision at a, at a young age so they have something they can aspire to. And then the impact beyond that is that when they are in spaces that have been predominantly dominated by men, we have the diversity that we need in our world, right? Like, how many times do you look at a council or some 40 under 40 list and there's like all white men? or all men in general, like where are the women, you know, where are the people of color and our world, I believe, cannot be, um, cannot reach its full potential in any space until we have diversity, until all the voices um, that represent our world are put in positions of power because we just live in a world where we hire people that look like us, you know, or we are more comfortable with people that look like us and I, I want to, to help change that and I just believe that the more we put women in visible leadership positions the more young girls will then follow and then our world will eventually be more diverse in all the right places. And you gave off a few names but who are those people when you were growing up that you, you did look at and say you know I can be that? Yeah I mean first my mom you know I mean she was a, a single mom for most of the time I was growing up and uh, has always been strong, a great example to me. I'm a huge Oprah Winfrey fan. Like, I just love Oprah. Like, I mean, I just, I mean, I hear her voice and I, and I just feel this calm right? over my life, you know? I can so, understand that. I can understand that. Yeah. And then, uh, like I said, you know, Robin Roberts has always been someone that I've looked up to, but I, I just, you know, I'm kind of weird in a way where, um, it hasn't always been about women role models in necessarily the space that I'm in, but just women that are doing amazing things in any place in the world. So I, I could probably name off a good 100 <laughs> like right now, but it's like, you know, I've, I've found inspiration in, in a lot of different places, but those are just a few of the women. And I know that mentorship is a you know big part of your mission. Um, I was a part of your Rising Media Stars program last year. Why is mentorship important to you? Well, I just, um, again, in looking back and combing over my life, there were some places where I got stuck, right? where I was like, okay, I don't know what to do. I don't know what I should be getting paid. I don't know if I should make a change right now. I don't even know how to get into this career field. And it's, your career journey should not be a lonely one. Like, I just believe in community. And um, so along the way, there were so many people that helped to connect the dots for me in places where I got stuck. And most of it was just using their own experiences. Um, yeah, I have had some people definitely champion for me, advocate, pick up the phone and all those things. But it was really uh, the people who, were, who looked into me and saw something bigger and better and breathe life into me. Like I remember there's a woman named Felicia Hall Allen who was one of my mentors and she told me one day, she said, so how long are you gonna be you know, in your, in your current position? This is why I was working in athletic administration. I was like, I don't know, you know, I like my job. And she's like, you're bigger than that. You know, like there's mm -hmm. something else you're supposed to do. Like your voice is supposed to be heard on a different level. And I had never, I hadn't seen that in myself. You know, and so um, having men mentors is important. I mean, because people have experiences and they can come back and share them. And they, it makes life a lot easier <laughs> yes. for you when you don't have to recreate the wheel, right? Like, um, and they can give you direction in places and spaces where you need it. Yeah, and I've definitely been appreciative of that. Um, I know a big part of coming into the program, I was in a space where, you know, didn't know if my look was what, you know, is um, good for national television, right? But I saw you on ESPN with your uh, cornrows, you, you had braids in, I can't even remember. Um, 
definitely have and you. yeah <laughs> and I know that you know you go across the country and you talk about your brand and I know that authenticity is a part of that and I can see that in again in your hairstyle on national television uh, you you mentioned a hot girl summer the other day you know oh, yes, during the broadcast there. <laughs> yeah but you know authenticity seems to be a part of you know who you are and your brand is is that a conscious choice yeah for sure like Especially when it comes to culture, because I was a kid that grew up heavily on hip hop music. Um, my mom was like used to wear her Nelson Mandela T-shirt under her like outfit to work. Okay. Uh, and so you know, as far as the things that we're passionate about um, as a family, they were always embedded into who we were. You know, cornrows were not a vacation look in my house. Like you got your hair cornrow, you were getting ready to get your picture taken. Right. Like it was a special occasion, and so. Um, just being able to be free and be who you want to be. Like, I don't know about you. I don't know about anybody out there, but, um, if I am not myself, I can't do a good job. You know, we all want to be excellent at whatever it is we do. So if that's wearing my hair the way I want to wear it, if it's mentioning, you know, a little bit of hot girl summer <laughs> on the broadcast, like that is LaChina. That's staying true to who I am. And I just think, um, everybody's already, already taken. So just be yourself. Yeah, and I know this may be uh, shifting gears a bit, but um, another big topic in women's basketball has been the uh, coverage of NBA players at these WNBA games. And, you know, this might be a little messy. I don't know, but I do want to. I want to. I know, but it's right. It's a a nuanced conversation about that because obviously we want the support. But I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, somebody asked me about it the other day, and they were like, well, do I feel like the NBA is put in a position where they have to validate the WNBA? So it's like, oh, you know, these people are at the game. That means that they're good, you know. Um, I I don't like when it feels gimmicky, like when there's a video and you have have an NBA player saying, I like the way Elena Deladon moves, you know, like that to me can be a little much, Mm -hmm. but... I don't mind, again, the authentic display of appreciation because I hope one day we do the same when a WNBA player is at an NBA game. That's what needs to happen. Just because we're more aware on the WNBA side of, you know, the brother and sisterhood, and I think we've done a better job of showcasing that, um, doesn't mean that it it shouldn't be happening on the other side as well. I'm, I'm happy that people appreciate what these women do in the WNBA because they're fantastic. And whether that's LeBron or Oprah or Ellen or whoever, um, you know, just putting these women in spaces where they can gain new fans is important. And I do think that the NBA is obviously like the most successful basketball league ever. (laughs) So if there can be some cross marketing that helps to grow uh, the WNBA through the basketball fan, I'm all for it. But uh, I think we're beyond kind of doing that intentionally. But it it is nice to see how how the men support the women and, and vice versa. So what is your hope for women's basketball or women's sports in general for the future? Ooh, girl, how much time we got? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, really my hope is that the disparity in coverage for women's basketball changes. That you wake up in the morning and you turn on your television and you see people debating the WNBA finals. Or you're watching Ellen and she's promoting the WNBA finals or you know just you're driving down the street and you may not be in a city where you got WNBA team but you see a billboard and these women are there and they're present like a presence right Mm -hmm. um that it would be um significant to all the young girls and even the young boys growing up that need to see women in leadership in powerful positions and we all know what sport does it connects people so that's why that space in particular is so important Um, But even when it comes to what they're getting paid, like I'd love to see the WNBA players get paid more money. Sponsors, where are you? You know, invest in the WNBA. Where are you? You know, people willing to put money into women. Like invest money into women. And for a lot of reasons that we don't have time to get into, just our world in general, it's not just sport. You know, women just are underappreciated. And I I just want to see that change. It just takes more people in the room where decisions are being made saying, 
no, we're going to do this because this is the right thing to do because these women are amazing because they deserve right. it. So, um, you know, I just, I just want to see overall growth. And, and uh, I know we've got a ways to go, but every day, as long as I've got breath, I'll be pushing <laughs> for it. Yes. Well, I've enjoyed this. Um, it's a long time coming. I'm glad yes. we got to do it. Um, Congratulations to you. I love Major Key. Yes. Especially the way you got the music <laughs> in there, the intro. I'm like, okay. I know you like Jay-Z, right. so I know that's... <laughs> yes, that's, you know, that's my guy, so you're right in my heart right yeah. there. Yeah. But if you had to give one piece of advice, a major key to those watching, what would it be? Wow, a major key. Um, I would just say don't be scared. I used to say, don't be scared. That's what I used to say. <laughs> okay. I, I did a little presentation. And I used to do this thing like seven steps to transitioning uh, into your dream job. And one of them was just, don't be scared. I just find that sometimes we get into a place where we start to feel insecure about ourselves or we don't value ourselves enough or we don't feel like we're good enough. And it creates this fear uh, that we're less than. And... If you can get over that fear, like push fear aside. Fear is like a gimmick. It's something that we create in our own minds and that society even sometimes is a part of planning in us where we don't see ourselves in, in certain spaces. Um, but if you can push past fear, if you can just every time it pops up and you underestimate yourself or you don't feel like you can do something, you can just push that aside. Be amazed at what you can do. Even if it's you're in a room with someone you look up to and you're too afraid to go up to them, you know, and yeah. just introduce yourself. Or, um, you know, there's a boss that has some hiring power in the room and uh, you know that that person could possibly change the trajectory of your career, but you're fearful that you might stumble over your words or you might not say the right thing or maybe you don't have on the right dress or is your lipstick smeared or whatever it is. <laughs> don't miss your moment. <laughs> Do not miss your moment because of fear. All right. So you're already here first. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. No, thank you yeah. so much. Keys, keys, keys. I got the keys.